Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're having a look at creating a sort of liquid lines effect in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to start with a brand new file. I'm going to make mine the size of my screen, which is 1920 by 1080. You can make your size anything you like and you can make it whatever orientation you like. We're going to start with a black fill and no stroke at all. And we're going to drag out a rectangle. So go to the rectangle tool and just drag out a long, narrow rectangle onto the screen. This is going to be one of your lines. So if you think it needs to be thicker or thinner, make it so right now. Select on that line. On the PC, you're going to hold down the Alt key as you drag a duplicate away. On the Mac, it would be Option. Let go when you get to where you want it to be, and then press Control D on a PC. That would be Command D on a Mac, so that you're going to make lots and lots of copies of that line at the exact same distance. I'm going to select over all of these, and so they'll be treated as a single object. I'm going to make them a group. Object, group. Just makes life a little bit easier. Now we're going to use the tools here that share a toolbar position with the width tool. The width tool is probably what you're going to see. You're going to click the little triangle here and click this triangle here to break it out into its own toolbar because we're going to be using quite a few of these tools. It will be easier if you have access to the toolbar. So I'm going to double click on one of these tools. Anything from the warp across to the wrinkle tool are going to choose exactly the same setting. So it doesn't matter which one you select, but I am going to be using the twirl tool. So I am going to double click on it to open up the brush dimensions. And these, you can see they're global. So they're affecting all of these brushes. So I'm going to make mine 750 by 750. That means it's going to cover most of the lines. I think I'm going to get a better result with a big brush. Now intensity is how quickly it operates. So if you want it to operate really fast, then set your intensity very high. I prefer mine to be slow, so I'm going to give it a 10% intensity. With twirl rate, a positive rate goes in one direction, negative goes in the other, and you have to come into this dialog to be able to do that change. So I'm going to start by applying a bit of a twirl to some of this area in the image. And then I'd like to go back the other way. So I'm going to set my twirl rate to a negative direction. You can experiment with these settings once you know what it is that you're looking at doing and what each of these tools does. The pucker tool squeezes things up. So again, you can see it's using that same big brush and you can pucker these areas to get a different effect. Bloat goes the other way. It pushes things apart. So you can bloat or push things to make them bigger. If you don't like what you've done, press Control or Command Z. These tools are kind of interesting. The scallop tool, which gives you this sort of interesting effect. The crystallize tool, which I really like and I'm going to use, and then the wrinkle tool. Kind of like the wrinkle tool and I am going to use the Crystallize tool, but I'm going to make it a sort of focal area here. Then there's the Warp tool. That's the last one. And this is a sort of push-pull tool. You can sort of pull things around and try and reshape things a little bit using this tool. Again, you could change the rate at which it works by just double-clicking on the tool and resetting the intensity, for example. So once you've got something that you like, I'm just going to go with this because it's just going to make life easier, but you can experiment with yours as you like. You can determine whether you want these lines to be over the edge of the document so you get sort of neat edges or whether you want it to be more organic in the middle of the artboard. So you'll either make it much larger and just use the area over the artboard or you'll make it smaller so you have more organic edges. I'm into the organic edges, so that's what I'm going to do here. Now, to be able to apply our freeform gradient that's going to allow us to color this, we need to make this into a compound path. So I'm going to select over the entire shape and I'm going to choose Object, Compound Path, Make. And this turns it into a compound path. I'm going to the layers palette because we're going to keep an eye on what's happening here. So there's our compound path. I'm going to add a rectangle to this document and the rectangle is going to be the exact size of the document, 1920 by 1080. I'll click OK. 
I'm going to give it a different color just for now so that you can see it. I'm going to square it up on the artboard so it needs to be covering the artboard exactly. And then I'm going to choose Object Arrange Center Back so it's behind the lines. So what I'm left with in the last palette is this rectangle here that is the colored rectangle behind my lines. So at this point you can select everything if you want to. It doesn't matter if you don't select everything. What matters is that you click on the layer itself so that it has this sort of color behind it. Because if you don't, when you open the fly out menu, the option we're looking for, which is the clipping mask option here, will not be available to you. So make sure that you have this layer selected. Go to the fly out menu and choose make clipping mask. Now this is not a typical clipping mask. It's not the same clipping mask you get if you right click something and choose make clipping mask. This is what is called a layer clipping mask and it behaves a little bit differently. I like these a lot. What I'm going to do is drag this clipping path underneath everything because once you create it, it's always created from the topmost object, but once it's created, you can drag it anywhere. It's fine and you can lock it down so that we can make sure that we can't even select this layer. It's this rectangle that we're interested in because it's this rectangle that is being cropped by the layer clipping mask and that's the object into which we can put our freeform gradient and it's going to work and it's not going to crash your machine. So you'll go to gradient and you'll click freeform. Don't be surprised if this happens because it's very easy to go, well, that didn't work. Well, it did work. It's just that all of the freeform gradient points right now are white. So we're going to click on one to select it, double click to open up the little dialog. Now it might open up at this option. If you want to be able to use your swatches, then just click on swatches. So I want to be able to use my swatches and I'm going to apply a sort of pink color to this. Now I'm going to select the next freeform gradient spot and double click on it and then apply a color from the color selector from the little swatches panel. I'm going to continue to do this. So you start off with four gradient stops, but you can have as many as you like and you can move them. So you can just grab one and move it. You can also size it so it has more or less impact on your document. You can double click and change the color in a gradient stop if you don't like it. And then you can just double click anywhere and add a gradient stop. And then you can click on it and change its color. So these freeform gradients are kind of cool to make, but just don't be scared that when you first create them, they seem like they're not working as you expect. As you drag these gradients around or these gradient stops around, you'll see the effect that they have on the underlying document. So once you've got an effect that you like, you could go ahead and put a background behind this. I'm going to put a solid black background behind it. So I'm going to click away from everything. I'm going to set my fill to a solid color fill and let's make it black. And then I'm going to again add another 1920 by 1080 pixel rectangle to my document. I'm going to position it so that it is squared up over the document but you can see that it's been part of this layer clipping group. So this layer is all clipped to this particular shape. So my rectangle is also being clipped. And if I move it behind the freeform gradient filled rectangle, then it disappears entirely. If I put it behind the compound shape, again, nothing's happening here. We're going to need a completely new layer for this. So I'm going to click on create new layer. I'm going to put my rectangle on the new layer. So it's now covering up everything. We've got our black layer on top of our nicely colored shape. Well, I'm going to pick the bottom one up and drop it ahead of the top one. So now we have our freeform gradient filled shape over a black background. And this freeform gradient is completely editable so we can come in and make changes to it. It's also possible to apply an effect such as an outer glow to this shape. So what we're going to do is select the layer and then go to Effect Stylize and I'm going to choose Outer Glow. Now this will need to be a lighter color, otherwise we won't see it on the black background. So I'm going to select a sort of, well, let's go for a sort of golden glow. It needs to be screen blend mode so it will lighten everything and then you'll set your opacity and the actual amount of your glow. So I'm going to do a glow that has a four pixel blur and about 
an opacity of about 80%. Experiment with these settings, click OK, and you'll see that now the shapes have this sort of blur around them. But when you're applying it, you want to apply it to the layer, not to a specific shape within that layer. Before we finish up, here are some of the other liquid lines effects that I've created. Some of them have backgrounds and some of them don't, but they're all created using the exact same process. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.